right, sir, there's your timer. You have four minutes starting now. To start, I want to remind everyone of humanity's ever-growing dependence on data and communication, which is exponentially growing, by the way, with no signs of slowing down. All of this data is hosted within the global data center infrastructure. However, there's one huge problem with this infrastructure. Data centers are projected to consume 20% of the world's power consumption by 2040, 43% of which will be used to cool down servers alone. And although there have been advancements in liquid cooling, there needs to be further advancements in cooling to meet the data demand of tomorrow. Hi, I'm Abhi Sastry, CEO and founder of Fluix, and at Fluix, through nanotechnology liquid cooling, we're enabling data centers efficient enough to be powered by renewable energy and built anywhere on the planet. For Fluix, this is a huge opportunity. As the global data center infrastructure market is a $27 billion industry with major customers such as AWS, Google, and Microsoft. But as I mentioned, Cooling technologies of today need to improve to meet the data demand of tomorrow. The two major drawbacks for even the most efficient cooling systems of today is they still use a significant amount of energy and moving parts to work. This is where Fluix is developing the next generation of cooling with our pumpless and self-boiling liquid cooler called Project Stellar. With our solution, we're eliminating a majority of moving parts allowing cooling to have net zero energy consumption, but still being able to cool high performance chips. And this is how we're doing it. The next secret in innovation of cooling is unlocked in microgravity, because we know that fluids and heat transfer behaves differently in space. Fluids don't boil in space. Instead, the bubbles created by the heat coalesce together and do not separate leading to a lack of heat transfer. By solving this bubble separation problem, we'll be able to create an ultra-efficient coolant that allows for easier boiling here on space. This is our innovation. Fluix is developing proprietary nano suspensions that have the ability for the nanoparticles to pierce bubbles in space, allowing for heat transfer and we're already working with some of the top developers of the next generation space station to make this happen. Why are we so focused on microgravity? It's because there's no other viable substitute. On the basis of nanoparticle dispersion and showing nanoparticles piercing microbubbles, we have to bring light to the fact that intermolecular forces behave differently without gravity vector. And there's no easy way to simulate this using computational fluid dynamics. So there needs to be the ability for us to do a microgravity experiment. And we're proposing multiple missions to low Earth orbit with our partners to be able to do this. And having completed microgravity experiments and when we optimize this fluid solution, we would be able to implement Project Stellar into the global data center infrastructure, enabling data centers so efficient they can be powered by renewable energy without having ha built anywhere on the planet, without having access to high uh, complex power grids or large water sources. At Fluix, we have done $50,000 in revenue selling our coolers to computer manufacturers. We recently went through a Techstars Deep Tech Accelerator, and we're looking to build a larger engineering team. So for the engineers out there, please come and see me. And for the government partners and the companies out there, we're looking to build a lab. So if you're interested in helping us, please come see me after. At Fluix, we're unlocking the next generation of cooling for data centers through microgravity. Thank you. Good pitch. You got, you got Tess to lean into that one, so we're going to start with her. Well, it's because I'm a little blind, so I was trying to, to read the slides without my glasses. I love this application. I, I very uh, manufacturing in space is usually pulling fiber optic cables in Z-Blaine for COM. So I will be using another one where the effects of zero gravity has a very useful application. I'm curious, uh, I saw 
because I did read a little bit of it, that you did some tests on the ISS. At what scale, and you sold that? Where are you at in terms of how much you're able to produce up there for meaningful use down here? All that we have done so far, we haven't done any microgravity testing at this point. We've done mostly simulation testing. That's what we've found out how bad simulation models are in software. So if there's someone out there that has figured out simulation models using ANSYS or computational fluid dynamics for a specific chemical change, please, I'd love to hear from you. But we've done a lot of simulation work, but what we have done is worked with two-phase boiling immersion cooling providers and providers that are already doing boiling for cooling here. But and we, so we understand a couple of things. We need to understand the constraints and we understand where they're lacking. And that's where we want to pull in. So although this is why we're here, Tess, we want to meet people like you, we want to meet the community to really get us on the next payload to, to do these experiments. Great. Mark? Um, well, great presentation. And uh, I could really see your passion for this business coming through. So that's, that's really important. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about where the technology comes from. Is, that, uh, is, it, is it a spin out? Have you, have you licensed it or is it being developed internally? Give us a bit of the history. Yeah, so our background currently, the product that we sell is coal plates. We attach directly our copper coal plates onto high performance processors found in GPUs, CPUs of some of the most highest performance servers. So the cooling solution that we sell right now is cold play technology. We are using our third party solutions to, to, to fine tune our, our liquid cooling solutions. But what we found is in our lab, we have the ability to fine tune not just the cold plate, but also the two phase immersion coolant. So we looked in ourselves, why don't we just develop the solution ourselves? So the basis is a nanoparticle solution uh, it could be titanium dioxide, silver nanoparticles, metal nanoparticles in a glycol-based solution. And that's what we're currently testing. So we're looking to develop it ourselves. Emily? Um, yeah, I have a, a clarifying question, um, just so I understand. The, the, you're, you're developing, uh, you're using microgravity to develop this pr the proprietary cooling system and then sending it back to Earth for Earth applications, like data centers on Earth or in other cooling applications on Earth. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So then my, my follow-up question, how do you do the, like, how do you, how do you compare, like, developing a more performant cooling in, in, in microgravity, sending it back to Earth, versus just, like, building more data centers that are maybe potentially less performant, um, but, like, have, you know, a less expensive coolant? Like, how did you think about, like, those two options, and why are, do you feel very compelled that, um, you know, this micro, microgravity is the key to unlocking like better data centers in the future. Great question. So it all depends on the data center application. Some of our investors it previously through Techstars was Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and they learn they run some of the largest supercomputers in the world. They run their workloads at 100% workload. So Emily, for use cases that run 100% workload, we're not geared towards all data center. We're geared towards the highest performance data centers on the planet. So where we really see our space is, yes, they'll be hosting data centers, they'll buy a server for 3,500 bucks, you use it until the end of lifespan, but we're really looking for a data center that uses their performance, they care about the one to 2% performance, and that's where we play, and that's where the optimizations of what we're doing with our coolant really matters. So for the, the power users out there that really care about that one or two or 3% improvement, mm -hmm. that can mean a lot when it's 900 servers in the data room space. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs in pictures over the years, and I've never seen anybody nearly as enthusiastic about cooling as you are. <laughs> what, what, why is that? What, what is this? Well, I got my degree in aerospace engineering, um, and, but I, I didn't really go to class as much. <laughs> um, Same. I should have gone to class more. Me too. But what I was doing in college, I was building a business, building and selling high-performance PCs. I sold gaming PCs, workstations to scientists, even at my school. And what I found was even from crypto miners to gamers to workstation and scientists, everyone cared about cooling. So that's how I kind of got into the space of cooling. And guys, I'm a tinkerer, whether it's working on my car or working on PCs, I'm in the lab working with my team and my engineers on this stuff. Because it's pretty damn cool when you can see a water-cooled system and you know you developed something that got that extra boost in performance. And that led to someone either saving time or money because they got their processing done faster. So that's where we geek out. Oh, good, 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 or good answer. Any, anything left? I've got one more. Have you spoken to any data centers, data center owners about this, and what do they say? 
We have, and currently that's the customers that we sell to. So we sell to high performance server manufacturers and the end user is data center. And when we're looking at some of the end user, we have five customers right now with a small to medium sized data center. And what they're telling us is you have the cold plate technology that you're showing a performance increase. For this next performance increase, we want, to sh we want you to show efficiency per square footage. So instead of sh uh, you developing something where moving parts can fail or something can fail, why don't you go in with something where you can sell us on a basis of the actual material that we buy and implement. So don't just sell the coolers to us, but sell us a raw material that we can use with our current existing solutions, which is the coolant. So that's what we're learning. Tess has one last question. So I don't have question. a question, but you asked for help to get up there. And I think I see Sven from ISS Cases in the audience who can help you get your payload up there. He controls experiments that go up and down. So that is Sven up in the audience. Thank go you, Tess, for the call. I appreciate that. That was very nice. Give him a round of applause.